Hi there. My name is Kenzie and I'm offering you a Hatha yoga practice today. I'm coming to you from the wonderful Everyday Counts community space. Please remember I'm only here to make suggestions um, and I suggest you find a comfortable way of being. You'll notice I don't have any props here, but if you need a blanket or blocks or a chair, always feel free to press pause and grab what you need at any time. So you might feel like lying down as we begin our practice, or you might feel like sitting in a comfortable upright seat. Feel free to change position at any time. Once you are comfortable, perhaps close your eyes. And beginning to breathe through your nose if you can. Allow yourself a few moments to simply arrive and to feel your body becoming still, acknowledging the support of the floor beneath you. Perhaps noticing all of the sounds around you. And let's begin to tune in to the breath. You might bring your hands to your belly if that's helpful. We will soften the belly and invite the in-breath to land nice and deep, expanding the abdomen, the waist, the low back. And exhaling softly and slowly, just feeling that inward movement of the belly. And let's keep going. Let's simply pay attention to the movement of the breath within our body, allowing that inhale to land soft and deep. The exhale, softer and slower. And remembering that this doesn't have to be the fullest inhale or the most complete exhale. This is that middle place where breathing is easy. We are simply inviting the in-breath to land a little deeper and the out breath to roll out a little bit slower. And we'll simply pay attention to the next five or six breaths. Soft and deep, soft and slow. If you're seated, perhaps with the next inhale, sitting just a little bit taller. And with the exhale, letting the tops of the shoulders soften away from the ears. A couple more breaths like that. Lengthening and softening. And here we are now. If it suits you, perhaps rest a hand against the belly, a hand against the chest, and offer yourself some sweetness, a kind word, a prayer, an affirmation just for you. your hands, perhaps opening your eyes. So we are going to be bringing a little bit of movement to the upper body. Um, so if you are lying down, perhaps slowly make your way to an upright, comfortable seat. If you're sitting upright, just give your legs a little shake, adjust your seat as you need to. You can sit in another position. Just anything that allows you 
um, to still feel comfortably upright, even sitting on the edge of a chair um, as we begin to uh, move. Yeah. So let's find that upright, comfortable seat. Now I want you to notice the crown of your head. I'm just going to tap the crown of my head just to kind of find it. And we're going to reach the crown of the head up towards the ceiling. And now we're imagining that we're drawing a circle on the ceiling with the crown of the head. So really reaching long through the neck. And you can imagine that circle turning into a spiral so it's getting a little bit bigger. Only so much as your head and neck feel comfortable. You might close your eyes, you keep reaching up through the crown of the head even as you explore this circular journey. And the shoulders are nice and quiet, the rest of the spine is nice and upright. I'm going to change the direction of the circle. Imagining that circle you're drawing on the ceiling now becoming that inward spiral. A couple more rotations here. Feeling those soft belly breaths as we slowly come back to stillness, back to center. Inhale nice and tall. Exhale, soften those shoulders. Yeah. So next one, we're going to find the tip of our nose. Again, I'm just going to tap it. I know where it is. I'm now imagining that I'm drawing a circle with the tip of my nose on the wall in front of me. So again, you might close your eyes. Imagine that small circle you're drawing with the tip of your nose. And then letting that become a bit of a spiral and growing a little bigger in all directions. A smooth, gentle movement here. Maybe one more bigger circle in this direction. And then we'll change the direction. We might start out kind of big. But then we'll begin to slowly spiral inward. Imagine that beautiful inward spiral you're drawing on the wall in front of you. With your nose. A few more. And then we come back to center, back to stillness. Again, shake your legs out if you need to. We're going to do something with the arms, and then we'll move into some other positions. If it's more comfortable to be kneeling or, again, adjusting your seat, please do. So I'm turning sideways so you can see this arm. Um, so you're going to notice the palm is facing in and the thumb is facing forward. We're going to reach down through those fingertips. For some of us, we're already touching the floor here. That's okay. Just reach the arm forward till it no longer touches. So I'm spreading my fingers, nice active arm here. I'm going to slowly reach that arm forward. Yeah. Now once I reach the arm overhead, and it doesn't have to get overhead, it can be a bit more out to the side. Notice I'm going to turn my palm to face out. Yeah, and I'm going to keep reaching behind me and keep rotating the arm until it's down by my side and the palm is facing out and the thumb is turned back. We're going to do this a few more times. So if you're not quite there, it's okay. So we're going to reverse the movement. We're going to reach it behind us. And as we do, it's sort of like we're unraveling. We're going to turn that arm back so that the palm is facing in as we reach the arm forward. Yeah, let's do that a couple more times. This might feel like a bit of a stretch through the shoulder and upper arm. So I'm palms facing in. I'm reaching the arm forward and up. And once it comes up, I start to turn the palm out. And I keep kind of circling that palm outward as I reach behind me. This is where I feel that stretch. Once it's reaching behind, palm is facing out, thumb is pointed back. And reverse that. There's the stretch until the palm is facing in again and I'm reaching forward. Yeah. And one more time. 
rotation outward. And I'm, re I'm keeping the rest of my spine really upright. My shoulders are nice and even, so I'm resisting rotation. It's tempting to just kind of rotate with the arm, but instead the rest of the body is staying nice and quiet. And the arm is back by your sides. For a moment, you could even rest here and notice how one arm feels relative to the other as we offer our breath. One of my arms feels very awoken uh, with lots more sensation and awareness. So I'm just switching sides so you can keep an eye on me. So other arm and reaching down and out through those fingertips, reaching the arm or the fingers away from the shoulder. Palm is facing in, palm is forward. And let's reach forward and up. And then notice I'm going to turn the palm to face out and it's going to keep rotating in that direction as I reach the arm behind. Palm facing out, thumb behind. I'm going to reach behind. There's that stretch as I slowly sort of unravel so that the palm is facing in as I reach the arm back down. We'll do that two more times. Reach out through those fingertips. Reach the arm away. I'm going to rotate the palm outward. Keep going, keep going. Yeah, it kind of feels like you're sort of twisting the arm. And then we reach behind, resisting rotation through the chest or spine. And then one more to go. The arm might be feeling a little bit tired here, that's okay. I'm just exploring this. And we're back to center. Let's rest our hand for a moment and check in with the breath. Hopefully both arms are evenly full of sensation now. Let's release our legs. Lean into the hands as you give those legs a shake. So I always like to start from the seated position with a little awareness to the feet and to the legs. So as we lean comfortably into these hands, let's look at our beautiful feet and spread the toes wide. Maybe just try curling the toes like you're making little fists with the toes and then spread the toes wide again. And we'll do that a few times more. Make that, those little toe fists and then spread wide. And one more time. Spreading wide. And then we'll begin to point and flex through the feet and ankles. So spreading those toes, drawing toes closer. Keep those toes spreading as we press the balls of the feet away and then point the toes. And let's go back and forth a few times. You might start to feel that little bit of stretch and engagement through the legs. And let's start to circle from the ankles. And then change direction. Oh, glorious feet. Wonderful. So we can kind of shake out the hands, shake out the legs a little bit. We're going to try something called slow drag. And I'm going to turn to face you a little bit, so maybe that will make it easier to understand. So let's bend um, one knee and keep the other leg straight. We're going to lean into the hands. We're going to notice um, the bent knee. I'm going to flex the foot a little bit. So that's just kind of lifting, lifting the ball of the foot off the mat, keeping the leg kind of active. We're going to bring the leg out to the side just about halfway. And now we're kind of pressing the heel into the mat as we slowly straighten the leg. And we're going to turn the toes in. And we're going to slowly drag the foot back. I'm going to do that again. Knee comes out to the side, nice flexed foot. We're going to drag. Nice and slow, and then we turn the toes in and we pull back. We do that one more time in this direction. You might start to feel your hips saying hello. Turn the toe in, pull back. And then we're going to reverse the movement. So now the knee is turned in, foot is flexed. We're going to drag it to straight. We're going to turn the toes out and back. Turn the knee in. Back out. We'll do that one more time. And then we can 
straighten the leg. You can shake out the hands, shake out the legs. Uh, again, you could check in, this time checking one hip and leg to the other. This one might have a little more to say. Yeah. So let's do the other side. We're going to bend the knee. Again, we're going to flex the foot. So we've lifted the ball of the foot off the mat. That keeps the leg quite active. We're going to bring the knee out to the side. Slow drag to straighten. Turn the toes in. Slow drag back up. We'll try that again. Drag to straighten. Turn it. Drag to bend. One more. And, and then we're going to keep the knee turned in. Foot flex. Let's slowly straighten the leg. Turn the toe out. And we're back. We'll do that again. Knee in. Drag it to straight. Foot out. And back. I think we have one more to go. In. Straighten. Out and back. And then we can release that and shake it out. Yeah. So let's play with another um, kind of variation for those legs and hips. We're going to take the feet, the legs wide. Um, and this is, you know, this is the first kind of bigger, stretchier movement for us today. If you've got a pillow or a couple blocks you want to sit on for comfort, please do. And your legs can be a lot closer. The idea is we take our legs as wide as we can um, while we can still sit upright. So if you take the legs wide and you start to round back to get there, I'd rather you bring the legs closer and see if you can get on those sitting bones. And that's where sitting on a block could help to elevate the hips and allow for that upright posture. Uh, so finding an upright seat, if you need to lean into the hands or on the legs or even back, that's fine. Notice my feet again, I'm flexing my feet. I'm gonna turn the feet in. I'm gonna turn the feet out. I'm just noticing how that feels. With that slow drag, we already explored that bit of rotation. Yeah, and this might be kind of a curious, active movement for you. Only going as far as feels comfortable. Yeah. Sometimes we explore the end ranges so we can find the middle place. So if this is in and that is out, what's the middle place? We're going to now see if we can maintain that middle place and sit upright. Yeah. And now we're going to shift a little bit from hip to hip. So we're going to keep the feet slightly flexed, even press the legs down into the mat, or even keep a little bend to them. So if this feels more comfortable, even placing pillows under, that's fine. We are going to see if we can shift a little bit on the hips. And I know that this stretchy feeling can be a bit, a bit uncomfortable and maybe a bit too intense. So again, we could guide the knees in, we could elevate the hips. Yeah. So I wanted to invite a little bit of side bending here. So again, we're shifting from side to side so we can kind of feel how that is. And then we're going to find a middle place. So we're feeling the sitting bones rooted and we're going to keep those sitting bones rooted. So I'm going to bring one hand to the floor, one side, and float the other arm up. Just notice how that feels. You can stay here. You can reach up through here. You could reach over, even bend the other arm and find that. And then we'll slowly come up. I like to kind of keep things moving so we can kind of warm up slowly. So we're going to bring that hand to the mat. And again, we could start here. We could reach here. We could reach further. Yeah, so let's keep kind of going. Let's find our own rhythm here. Again, we're keeping those legs kind of active, those toes pointed to the sky. We're feeling our sitting bones nice and rooted. Yeah. We're finding our own rhythm here. Maybe once more in either direction. Great. And then we'll meet back at center. We're going to take a little break from this movement and then come back to it because that's a big wide leg position. So let's lean into the hands and bring the feet closer to the edges of the mat. And we'll rock the knees from side to side. Yeah. 
letting things feel nice and soft. Wonderful. Now we are going to add that familiar twist so that we can prepare ourselves for a little bit of twisting, which we'll be doing in that wide leg pose. So as the knees fall to the right, we lean into the right hand, sweep that left arm around, reach behind us. A little extra reach here with the breath. And then slowly back. Let's try the other side. If the knees are falling to the left, it's that right arm that sweeps around. Reach back. Once more in either direction. And slow and steady. Moving with ease. And we'll meet back at center. Yeah. Okay, so I mentioned we're gonna come back to this wide leg posture, so adjust as you need to. Yeah. And let's turn towards one leg. And we're gonna slowly walk our hands down that leg, thinking about drawing the belly towards the thigh rather than sort of rounding to get your forehead there, kind of closing like a jackknife, drawing belly towards thigh. I'm gonna feel a nice stretch here. If you need to bend this knee, that's okay. Yeah, another breath. And then we'll walk the legs back, sorry, the hands back towards us and let's turn. So there's a little bit of twist here. Notice you're turning your chest to the leg and then drawing the belly towards the thigh as you walk your hand down your leg. Inhaling nice and tall, exhaling, drawing belly towards the thigh. One more breath here. And then let's come back upright. We'll try that once more either side. So I'm bringing my hands to either side of that leg, thinking about turning my chest to that leg as I walk my hands down. And you can kind of use the breath to deepen the stretch. Inhale, get a little taller, kind of lifting the heart. Exhale, belly towards thigh. Inhale, reach, lift the heart. Exhale, belly towards thigh. We'll try that with one more breath. Again, you can bend that knee if you need to. And we'll slowly come back upright. And we're gonna turn the chest to the leg. Walk those hands down the leg. Inhale, nice and tall. Exhale, belly to thigh. And nice and tall, belly to thigh. Wonderful, let's slowly come back upright. You can lean into the hands and just kind of softly wiggle those legs, those feet side to side. We only have one more little bit of movement here to explore. So let's Come back upright, we're gonna keep those legs active. We're gonna walk our hands in front of us, see if we can keep the sitting bones rooted. And again, we're gonna lift nice and tall and then walk a little further. Come nice and tall. And maybe a little further. So we're rooting down through those sitting bones. We're reaching up through the crown of the head. We're drawing the belly into that space between the thighs for a couple more breaths. Sometimes just getting familiar with that feeling of stretch, noticing how, how that feels for us in the body. And one more breath here. Wonderful, so let's come back upright. Uh, let's lean into the hands. Let's bring those feet wide again, bent knees, and we'll rock the knees. And just letting your hips have a little moment. Great. Okay, so from here, let's make our way to hands and knees, tabletop position. If you have tender knees, a blanket under those knees could be comfortable. If you have tender wrists, I know I can't wait bare today on that hand, then you can make fists, or you come on to forearms. Yeah. So taking a moment to notice how it feels to be here, maybe even rocking your hips from side to side. 
And finding a little bit of outer hip stretch. We've been warming up the hips today. And then let's turn that into a bigger circle. We're gonna rock to one side. We're gonna roll back across those heels. We're gonna rock to the other side and then shift the weight forward. Circling around. Leaning into those hips. Couple more circles. If it's helpful, maybe close your eyes. Notice how you feel. We're going to change the direction of the circle. And keep leaning in, leaning out, leaning around. A couple more circles. So we will meet in a child pose. We're going to widen the knees this time. So a slightly wide knee child, maybe right out to the edges of the mat if you want as you drop your hips towards your heels. And then we can walk the arms long, resting the forehead between the arms. Or we could stack the forearms to rest the forehead or even stack the fists. The idea is always to build the ground up to meet you. Perhaps closing your eyes as we reconnect to that soft, deep in-breath. And softer, slower out-breath. Couple more. Great, so let's return to our tabletop position. And we will move through cat-cow, which we do in every class, at least with me. Um, so we're finding our neutral spine. And again, you could be on forearms or fists here. I'm gonna tuck that tailbone under, and begin to slowly round the spine, kind of press the hands into the mat, feel the belly squeeze. We're gonna turn the tailbone up, and slowly begin to arch the spine, shrug the shoulder blades together, gaze forward, and just keep it going. Rounding, squeezing, stretching, and arching, extending. Then maybe closing your eyes, notice can you lead with the tailbone, allow every vertebra to Follow. And a couple more, either direction. our way back to that neutral spine and again we'll press into our child pose nice wide knee child pose for three or four breaths supporting that forehead however you need to find that soft deep in breath soft or slower out breath Wonderful. So final bit here on hands and knees is going to be a little bit of side bending. So I want you to notice my front leg. So I'm lifting the foot and I'm flexing the foot a little bit. We're back to that flexed foot position. The knee is still on the mat. I'm rotating the leg out to the side. And as I do, I'm going to shrug the shoulder towards the same hip. So I'm side bending. And notice you can also bring your ear towards that shoulder. We bring the foot back, we bring the head back to center, and we're gonna lift that other foot, we're gonna flex the foot, 
and rotate it out to the side, shrug shoulder to hip, hip to shoulder, even ear to shoulder, and slowly back. So we're gonna go side to side a few more times, looking for that accordion-like feeling or that sense of bringing your spine into a gentle C shape from side to side. Kind of feel the waist muscles engaging, and on the other side, stretching. A couple more times in either direction. I know this can be strong on the hands, so we can kind of feel like we're pushing the mat away. Stabilize the shoulders and keep those hands active. Once more, either direction. So rather than child pose, we're going to walk our hands towards us and come to kneeling with hips off of heels. Again, if we need more support for the knees, we can have it. Maybe bring the hands to the belly and let's just offer three breaths here to let things settle. Now this is a bit more of a challenging flow and so having a block to bring your hand onto or having a chair or being close to a wall could be helpful so just bear with me here. Um, I'm just going to hinge the hip back to get my hand onto the floor. The hand is going to be right directly out from that knee and then as I come back up I'm going to reach the opposite leg out to the side so I can be on fingertips here and that brings the floor a little bit closer but again your hand could be on a block or a chair and you could be a lot higher here. Um, the standing or the straight leg could be a little more bent. We're gonna see if we can bring the sole of the foot to the mat. Yeah, we're gonna float that top arm up, maybe even towards the ear. And find that stretch. We're gonna walk the hand, kind of reach it down the body. Yeah. And see if we can kind of shorten the waist and then stretch the arm long again. So we're going to reach that arm down. We're going to reach it down the body. Now we can hinge the hip back a little bit here. And then as we push into that knee, we can make our way upright. We're going to bring the hand to that straight leg thigh. We're going to find our side bend here. There's my hand again. And now we're going to play a little bit with this flow. So we're going to reach that arm towards the floor. As we do, we can hinge the hip back a little bit. Reach for the floor, hinge the hip forward find our stretch. And you can skip that hinge if you want to. That's just going to make it a little more accessible as we reach down the body and bring hand to the hip. Hinge, hip back, push, and lift up. Now if you want to stay at one end of this and stretch into it, please do. And lots of side bending here. Again, we can reach back, push into the floor, lift going as slow as you need to. We're going to do a couple more in either direction. Hinge back, lift up. And one more. So we can hinge back, reach for the floor. So we do need to guide that knee in. So again, if you want to use the floor, drag it in. We'll take a moment at center. Again, hands to the belly. Soft shoulders, especially if that was a challenging little flow for you. You know, soften the shoulders. Find the breath. And we've kind of prepared the body for that because we've done some of those wide-legged poses. We've awoken those hips. We've also done some of that side bending. Um, so again, we're going to hinge the hips back and reach for the floor beside that knee. We're going to bring that opposite leg out. And fingertips, block, chair, all good. 
and float that top arm up, just looking for the side bend. And bring that arm down the body. First time, we're just going to see if we can feel some engagement here as we reach. And again, we'll reach the arm long. As we reach down the body, you can even bring hand to the hip. We're going to take the hips back. We're going to push into that bent knee. Come upright. Walk the hand down the thigh. Let's find the side bend on this side. Let's float the arm back down. And again, we can hinge hip to get our hand to the floor and then shift the hip forward. You know, this is a bit of a challenging set of movements. So again, meet yourself where you're at here. Take it slow, sitting back, lifting up. And a couple more in either direction. Perhaps one more. Reaching back, reaching down, pressing forward. And hinging back, pushing through that knee. Upright, back. Okay, so we need to bring the leg in. So again, you can lean into the floor to get there. And come back upright. Notice how we feel. And this might be a nice chance to move into one more child pose. You could widen your knees here, drop your hips back, walk your hands forward, support the forehead however you need to. Soft, deep in-breath, and softer, slower out-breath. Wonderful. So we'll return to our tabletop, and then we're actually going to lie down onto our side. You need a pillow under your head, you're welcome to. Or you can use that arm under the head. Uh, we're just seeing if we can stack the shoulders, stack the hips, knees are comfortably bent. Yeah. So I wanted to come back to that idea of sort of some hip strength and mobility. Um, so we're gonna flex the top foot again. So we're doing it again. You can even pull your heel towards your butt a little bit. So this is a nice active leg. We're gonna lift that leg off the other one. We're gonna bring the knee forward. We're going to bring it out to the side, circle it behind us, and back around. We're going to keep that foot flexed, keep pulling the heel towards the bum. So you can just make kind of a big knee circle. Yeah. And already, I'm sure your outer hip has something to say about this. This can be a tiny circle. We're going to keep those hips stacked so we're not hinging the hip forward and back. We're really moving it through its paces here. I think it's probably time to change direction. Again, flexed foot, heel to the butt. Sweep that leg behind us up and around. You can really hug it into that belly as you finish the movement. Reach behind, up and around. Yeah, this is a hard one for me. So if you're feeling the challenge of it, that's okay. Legs are heavy. And those outer hip muscles don't always get used as much as the other ones, yeah. Ooh. Okay, next time that knee is beside the other one, let's stay right here. We're gonna do a little counter pose to that one to help stretch out those, those hips we just strengthened. So remember which leg you were lifting, yeah? Just keep, keep aware of it. We're gonna roll onto our back nice and slow. Feet are hip distance apart, knees are bent. I want you to lift that same leg again, 
Yeah. Again, you can flex the foot. We're going to cross that ankle over the opposite thigh, press the knee away. That should feel or might feel like a nice juicy hip stretch. If you need a little more stretch, you could lift the opposite foot. You could even hold on to the thigh or the shin or even rock a bit from side to side. A couple more breaths here, anywhere you need to be. Soft, deep in breath. And softer, slower out breath. And you can slowly release that before we switch sides. Let's do this other counter pose where the feet are wide and the knees are bent and we can rock those knees to one side and then the other. Great. Okay, so now we need to roll over onto our other side. I'm going to switch to this end just so I can keep an eye out. Um, you could simply roll over if you want. So we're resting our head on our arm, nice stacked shoulders, stacked hips. Yeah. So we're going to flex that top foot and kind of pull the heel towards the butt. We're going to lift the leg and draw the knee towards the belly. Out to the side and behind and forward again. And do this three or four times in this direction. And keep pulling the heel towards the butt as you flex the foot and keep those hips from shifting side to side. One more in this direction. I know hips have a lot to say when we move in this way. So you can take a break in between if you need. I'm going to draw the knee to the belly and then we're going to push that foot behind us. And bring the knee around into the belly again. And know that I'm always exaggerating these movements. They can be a lot smaller. Got about two more to go here. One more, nice. Knee comes in and then we rest knee to knee. So remember which leg you were lifting. We're gonna roll onto our back. Feet hip distance apart. We're gonna lift that same leg, same flex to the foot, heel towards the butt. But then we bring that ankle over the opposite thigh. This will probably be a a delicious stretch at this point. And all of those variations if you wish. So this could be enough or you could lift the opposite foot. You could hold on to the shin or the calf. You can tell they're too far away for me. You could rock from side to side. more breaths here, feeling that sensation of stretch, but still offering that relaxation breath, soft and deep, soft and slow. Okay, so we can bring that foot back to the mat and we'll take the feet wide and we'll rock the knees. Great. So we're just about finished with our active practice today. I did want to play a little bit with Happy Baby. And so let's lift the, knee, the feet and hug the knees towards the belly and we can rock a bit from side to side here. And maybe circle both knees together. Just notice what's happening around your sacrum and low back. Change the direction of the circle.
and then the knees can come back to center. So we're gonna guide with our hands, our knees away from each other. Feel that stretch. And then guide those knees back together. We'll do that a few times. Away. And together. And this could be your practice. This might be enough to support with the legs, to ease into that stretch. If you want to, you could stay here and kind of use the weight of the arms to deepen the stretch. Or you could hold on to the backs of the knees and gently pull them in towards the belly, sorry, towards the armpits. Or you could even bring your shins upright. You might reach for the ankles. You might reach for the edges of the feet. Again, tugging those knees down towards the armpits. Some people naturally want to rock a little bit from side to side here. And some folks might even want to explore bringing the legs out to the sides, legs straighter. So just play with where you want to be here for a few breaths. And if the legs are wide, there's always that option to guide with the hands. I'm just coming back to that wide leg position we explored at the start of the practice. And so we'll be here for a few more breaths, just whatever you need here, whether that's that big wide leg stretch, whether it's that Happy baby. Or even the simplicity of a gentle wide knee position. Let's offer three more breaths here. Wonderful. So gently guide those knees together, release those legs, and we'll bring the feet to the mat. Again, final bit here if you want to rock the knees. It is time for final relaxation, but if there are any other poses or stretches or movements you wish to do, please feel free. You might want to add a sweater or a blanket, a pillow, anything else to prepare you for final relaxation. And make yourself comfortable, get cozy. I've mentioned this before, if it's uncomfortable to have the legs long, a few options. You can place some pillows under those knees and let the legs rest over the pillows. Or you could take your feet wide, turn your toes in, rest the knees against each other. That can allow the low back to get fairly quiet. You might turn the palms to face up or in as the arms come away from the body. You might rest the hands on the belly or somewhere on the abdomen or chest. Perhaps closing your eyes. Breathing through your nose if you can. Again, we'll allow a few moments to simply arrive here. Here at the end of our yoga practice. Letting your body begin to settle. Acknowledging the soft support beneath you. the gentle space around you. And the easy, quiet rhythm of your own breath. The inhale, soft and deep. And the 
exhale, softer and slower. Sense the breath energy moving through your abdomen, whatever that means to you. Feeling the breath energy moving through your abdomen. You're now sensing all of the space in your abdomen. Sensing the breath energy moving through your lower body. Whatever that means to you. Now sensing all of the space in your lower body. Sense the breath energy moving through your upper body. And sensing all of the space in your upper body. Sensing the breath energy moving through your head. Sensing all of the space in your head. Sensing the breath energy moving through your heart. Sensing all of the space in your heart. Continuing to sense all the space within body, mind, and heart.
And if your mind wanders, that's okay. For just a minute more, come back to all the space within body, mind, and heart. If you feel a deep need to stay right where you are for a little while longer, please feel free. If you are ready to complete the practice, perhaps wiggle your fingers and toes. Perhaps yawn or stretch. You may feel like rolling over to one side, resting your head on your arm. Or perhaps pressing that top hand into the floor in front of you to help guide you upright. Or we could return to a comfortable upright seat. Perhaps once more closing your eyes. If it suits you, resting a hand to the belly, a hand to the chest. Offering yourself some sweetness, a kind word, a prayer, an affirmation just for you. And slowly releasing your hands, opening your eyes. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you've got any questions or concerns, always feel free to reach out to us at the Everyday Plants program. And hopefully I'll see you all again soon. Bye for now.